set the scene for us then. What was Lords like that day? It wasn't dissimilar to the World Cup uh, final this summer. It's a lot less uh, important, but it was India and it was England against India and it was a stinking hot day. You know, just thousands of Indian fans coming in. It was almost like an India-Pakistan game at Edgebaston or somewhere. The, the, those horns that they bring in were going off. The Indian flags were there. Lords can be quite a corporate ground. Lords can be quite low key and you can hear the you know, the popping of the champagne corks. It wasn't like that that day. It was a real sort of uh, feisty atmosphere on and off the field. It was a great game of cricket. First half of the game, though, went well. Uh, Marcus Triscothic made a fantastic 100 and you made your one and only one day international 100. I've got it. I went back through you the tape. You could have said you made, a, you made 100. <laughs> well, you made your one and only ODI 100. I'm going to go back to the commentary from that game. Barry Richards, as you walked out to bat on comms, he said, here's NASA Hussain, fresh from getting his OBE, strike rate not great, Neither is the average, as your stats went up. <laughs> <laughs> Summed up pretty well, Barry Richards. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I would say I was, that sums it up pretty well. I was an average white ball cricketer. For about a year, they had gone on Willis, Botham and Agnew on the radio. Every time I put on the TV on the radio, Hussein shouldn't be batting at three. Hussein shouldn't be batting at three. Hussein is rubbish at white ball cricket, shouldn't be batting at three. Um, and it did wind me up, but I was obviously very, very aware I was under pressure walking out to bat that day. But you got the 100 and the celebrations are infamous. Did you have that planned? I remember getting to 30 in about 50 deliveries on a very good Lord's pitch. And I thought, Nas, for once, just stay in. It will get easier. Do like what you're supposed to do. You've used up these deliveries, get 100. And if you do get 100, turn round to those three in the commentary box and stick three fingers up to them. <laughs> and I got to 99 or whatever, and whoever it was, Zahir Khan or whoever bowled me one outside off, and I ran it down to third man. I was batting at the nursery end, and I ran, I think I was batting with Freddie Flintoff, ran up towards the pavilion, and I thought, shall I, shall I not? And, you know, it, what, it was what made me what I was, really. It was, I was a bit feisty. I was, a, you know, I ticked at the best of times. And I just turned to the, the press box and stuck three fingers, pointing to the three on the back of my shirt. And Duncan said to me after Duncan Fletcher said, Crikey, I thought you'd stuck two fingers up to the press <laughs> box. You know, that was going to be the end of my England captaincy. So... I remember someone said, one of the journos, one of someone, maybe an ex-cricketer said at the time, I bet he'll regret doing that. And I don't actually. Someone asked me now, if you're in that position again, would you do it again? Absolutely. So the halfway stage, what are you thinking? You put a load of runs on the board. How confident were you? I don't know the exact score. It was about 325. 320 odd, yeah, 325. And in those days, not like now, those days, that is a seriously a lot, good score. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot. You didn't get 300 a lot in there. We, we never got 300. But we knew it was a very flat pitch. We knew it was very quick. You can lose control at Lords very quickly because the outfield, how quick it is. Um, and obviously they had this fab five. Um, and I remember going back on and after an over, because I'd never batted so long in white ball cricket, I got cramp. <laughs> I used to suffer from cramp when batting. And the only way for me to stop my cramp was to take magnesium supplements. But the only problem with taking magnesium supplements is that if you take too many, you end up on the loo for the rest of the day. <laughs> I hadn't quite got the balance of being on the loo or having cramp right. So I ran upstairs to go and take some more magnesium supplements. And by the time I'd taken it, I'd looked out on the balcony and India were like 40 for none of three or something. <laughs> with Trezor, whoever the vice captain, scratching his head, we were up against it. How hard is it to remain calm as a leader and think clearly with all that going on? That was a side of things I didn't mind. I will always knock my own game and my own batting. I'll do that till the cows come home. I wasn't a great player. But as far as the captaincy side, because I'd been brought up under Keith Fletcher at Essex, Graham Gooch at Essex, played under Alex Stewart, played under Michael Atherton, taken time to read 
uh, Mike Braley's Art of Captain C. I had visualized and been in these situations before, and I had been in these situations before. We'd have been on a tour of Pakistan where Pakistan were chasing big scores on flat pitches. So we'd been there. We had two very good reverse swing bowlers, three actually. Ronnie, Ronnie Irani was a good reverse swing bowler, but Goff and Flintoff in particular were exceptional. So if we could get the ball reversing um, uh, and swinging, then we had a chance. We got wickets at regular intervals. We got them on 46 for five. And that's the moment you ask me, you ask me now, what do I think about on the treadmill? I've got India in a NatWest final, 146 for five, chasing 325. And we've got Ganguly, Sawag, Dravid, Latchman, and then Tendulkar out, the fifth one. That's when you're thinking, what could I have done differently? Are you at any stage thinking, right, I've got to gamble now and use some of my key men and maybe not have them later on? I think because they've got off to a flyer, you, you've got to realise that that situation, you just can't left drift and you can't worry about what's going to happen in the 47th over. If Ganguly and Sewa keep smashing you with the batting that they've got to come, you've got to try and get wickets now. Remember in those days, you used one white ball. Now you use two. So that white ball used to get softer, darker, reverse swing, start getting harder to hit. So you realize that if you can just get them behind the rate, then they will have a bigger hurdle to climb later on. Getting onto the 146 for five, I mean, what a wonderful position to be in. And you think, well, you got the game done. Did you psychologically as a side take your foot off the gas? I didn't. Um, I think looking back, I guess some of our team might have done. I'm not, and I'm not saying in their body language or the fact they did anything different or I actually saw someone, but it must be a natural reaction that when you're playing against India and they've not got half the score and you've got those five, they were the fab five out, there will be a couple of people thinking, oh, we're nearly there, we're done. Ganguly himself admitted, I've, I get on very well with Sarah now, very well. I, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're good friends. And he's admitted many a time, he thought the game was gone. Um, so psychologically, maybe one or two, but I knew then that the game can just jump up and bite you on the backside. And the biggest thing that happened was, we got this ball reverse swinging, and Steve Buckner look at him when it's, too, it's, go, it's going too soft, it's too discoloured, I'm going to change this ball. Um, and I remember having a row with Buckner about it. We, we, we want this ball. He said, no, we're going to change it. And that, that used to wind me up in those days. You just go to a box of balls, random box of balls, just pick one out. Here you go, Skip, bowl with that. And that one went gun barrel straight. So all those plans I had, of holding back my reverse swing bowlers of Flintoff, Irani, Goff, are now up in the air because it's not reverse swinging anymore. How big a challenge is that as captain when you've got to be so adaptable? Huge, because then you've Raj and Mohammed Kaif starting to build a partnership. The moment those two started to hit boundaries and that Indian crowd were woken up, we went from silence to almost like, you know, the Ankeny Stadium in Mumbai never forget the effect of pressure on how someone performs from being well drilled plans going well to suddenly the crowd are awake and your lengths are too short medium paces dragging it down getting pulled etc when it is the atmosphere was going like it was that day you could see more the bowlers actually you could see sometimes in a bowler's eye okay what do i do now skip where do we go yeah. now we had them 140 for five, and we're now losing a game we should be winning. So from 146 for five, 267 for six, so a partnership of 121. When you got you, Raj, out, what were you thinking? Thinking back in the game. Yeah. Thinking we've got an opportunity here. India's tail is reasonably long, but I know I have to get both of these out. If, if we've got you, Raj, if Cave's still there at the end, we're losing this game. It's the greatest innings that lad played. You know, he'll be remembered for that. I saw a picture of him the other day with you, Raj, a picture of Lords in the background, and he's tweeted, great memories. And the memory was for that, for that day and that game. Um, I remember, actually, him coming in, and there was a bit of a sledge um, because, it was, you know, we've got the Fab Five out, and someone saying, 
right, who's this then, Skip? And I was like, oh, I, think, I think he must drive the bus. I think he drives Tendulkar <laughs> around on the bus or whatever. And I, I might have made up the ending for an after-dinner speech or whatever, but when he hit the winning runs, he, you know, not bad for a bus driver sort of like. <laughs> he gave me that sort of look. Um, you know, he, he played out of his skin. So my thought process was, um, I need to get this let out. I really do, because um, we've got a ball that's not really reversing, and Lords is such a quick scoring ground that he'll see him over the line. Every time we go, we go to India and I go to India and I do India phone-ins and various India media, that's the game they want to talk about. And in a nice sort of way, because it was done by those two. If it had just been, say, Wagon Tendulkar again or whatever, it had been like, okay, they've done it. That done by two relatively unknown young lads, I think was a great boost to Indian cricket. So as the target is ticking down, take us into the middle at Lords. How frenetic is it? How frenetic is your mind? And at one point, do you think, you know, we're stuffed here? I always felt they were 10 ahead of where they needed to be. I was always looking at that scoreboard. I'd use my trump cards a little bit. And I was looking at that scoreboard thinking, I wish it was 10 less. All the way through that. And someone would need to come on and literally bowl two overs for nothing here to get us back in this game. And to be fair to Flintoff, and I always have a huge amount of respect for Freddie's bowling at the death of an innings. Freddie nearly did it. Freddie came on and gave us an over and half of brilliance. And then Kay fit him for a four and it just got him into single figures. And then, you know, there are a couple of hits away and then it's one hit away. And then it's the chaos of the overthrows. And it is then chaotic in the middle. It is then the, the crowd again, ballistic. And but all the way through the last four or five overs, I was looking at that scoreboard thinking they're just a bit ahead of where we need where they, we need them at the moment. So in those sort of instances, is there a sense of, I don't know, that you can't do anything? You've lost a little bit of control, helplessness? No, because, well, there is, but I always try to stop that because one thing as captain, you must always feel is that at any stage in the game, however bad it looks, there is something you can do that can alter the state of play, that can change the course of that game. So even when I'm looking up at that scoreboard thinking they're 10 runs ahead, I've now got to come up with a plan that buys us back those 10 runs. Because the same pressure that we're under, if we can get them under pressure at the end, where they need 10 off the last over, Remember their history of losing finals. Imagine, you think we are under pressure as England cricketers, Wardy? Nothing. Yeah. In Indian cricketers, if you lose a game, every single TV channel has you on and there's votes. Should Ganguly go? Should Kohli go? Should Tendulkar go? You know, they are, they are as bad as anyone that if they lose, they will hammer you. So I always knew that the pressure would shift if we could get ahead at the end but we never got ahead. So as the winning runs are hit and the Indian supporters at Lords go absolutely berserk, how lonely a place is it as England captain? And what are you thinking about it? What's the process you've got to do? You've got to shake the hands. You've got to go upstairs. You've got to deal with the press. You've got Saurabh Ganguly on the balcony at Lords waving his shirt around. Can you take us back into those moments? Then you are. Then that helplessness and that lonely place, then it, then it comes then you are completely blank. You're in a zone, but in a very bad zone. You're in an immediate place of, how did we lose that game? Something flashes up in your mind, 146 for five. Even in that moment, you're thinking, an hour and a half ago, we had a 146 for five. And we're walking off this field loser. And you're, you're literally thinking about that while you're shaking hands. And you're doing all the pleasantries and you'll go up to CAFE and you'll go up to the Indian team as they walk down through the long room and down on, and you're shaking hands. And you're looking up at Saurav, and you're not, that doesn't bother you. you. All that bothers you is an hour and a half ago, we had the Fab Five out, and we were winning the NatWest Trophy final, and we've now lost again. How did this happen? And you know that will, you, as, because you're a captain that cares, you know you'll care about that for the rest of your life. So the rest was just periphery. The rest is small stuff. The rest is just noise. And to this day, I admire Ganguly for doing that. He says that, I think it may be VVS and Harbajan were having a chat on the balcony as they got 5-4 to win. 
and one of them said you've got to do something and in the same way that i had to think should i point at my back or not he said he had to think should i do this at lords on the balcony and i have huge respect for him for doing that because that's what made him the captain that he was people ask me in india you know was that a disgrace for ganguly doing that at lords no mate that is well done you've won a final you have your moment you deserve it so my my thoughts were about me our team how did we lose what did you say to the players what did duncan fletcher say to the players you can imagine the sort of um, feeling in the dressing room you've been there when you've lost and especially a game you should have won but that's not the time for finger wagging and massive talks and also i felt the players didn't let us down i can't remember a player on that day letting me or england or the team down we got done by two very good cricketers in Kaif and Yuvraj that took us by surprise and shocked us. Probably shocked Ganguly actually and shocked India. So I never went into that dressing room finger wagging and there were times I did as you know. There were times I just wouldn't take people just going along and putting on an England shirt and not caring. I saw 11 England cricketers caring deeply uh, and I saw 11 cricketers in the dressing room absolutely distraught with losing that game. So it was not a time for um, you know, big rollickings. Do you remember walking or driving away from Lords? You were there at the World Cup final this summer. There was that buzz. Yeah. And you're walking down the streets and all of the England fans were talking about it and all the New Zealand fans were staring into the distance in sort of absolutely, how did that happen? How did we lose that? Did we lose that? You know, whereas in the complete role reversal, walking back to the hotel, the Indian fans were going absolutely ballistic. I think one of their, one of them was maybe even an, a member of parliament or something and may have just overdone, <laughs> overdone it on the day a little bit as well. <laughs> might, might have been on the grog a little bit early or whatever. And he was going absolutely mad. And one of the papers had footage of it and everything. So they were enjoying their success and I don't blame them. <laughs>